So right, hi everyone. So today we'll be discussing the concept regarding the neuromuscular junction, right? So first of all, what is exactly neuromuscular junction? It is the junction between the neuron or the nerve ending and the muscle, right? So here you find this as your neuron and this as your muscle, skeletal muscle, right? Any any of the muscle you take. For suppose this is your biceps muscle, right? Any any of the skeletal muscle, right? So, this is your nerve ending or also called as the axon terminal, right? The junction between the axon terminal as well as the muscle, this particular junction is called as your neuromuscular junction. So, now I am going to enlarge this part and explain how exactly this neuromuscular junction works. And one important thing is that uh, knowing the complete details about a neuromuscular junction is so important because there are some drugs that act in this mechanism and block the receptors. So when the receptors are blocked then there will be no neuromuscular transmission leading to several types of muscle weaknesses. So to understand the drug action in pharmacology you need to know about the neuromuscular junction in a detailed fashion. Right? So first of all we will draw about regarding the neuron or the nerve ending. right? Right, so this is your nerve ending. I'm enlarging it and showing you. And now let me just be more big. So this is your nerve ending, right? And as I told you, I'll draw regarding the skeletal muscle. This is your skeletal muscle, right? So the junction between the neuron as well as the skeletal muscle, more appropriately speaking, the junction between the nerve ending of a neuron as well as the skeletal muscle. So this junction is called as the neuromuscular junction. So first of all, the main key role or the main neurotransmitter that is playing a key role in this entire mechanism of neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. So first of all, we need to know how acetylcholine is synthesized, right? Now, this is the membrane of the axonal nerve ending or we can also call this as presynaptic membrane. On the surface of or on the membrane of the presynaptic membrane or, or on the membrane of the presynaptic nerve ending, we find small transporters here. Right? So these transporters are named as choline transporters because they transfer the choline which is present in the extracellular fluid into the nerve ending. Choline. So this is the choline that is present in the extracellular space or the extracellular fluid. So this choline is transported with the help of this transporter protein called as choline transporter into the presynaptic membrane or the presynaptic nerve ending. So this is your choline. Now and one important thing is that you also know on every nerve ending, on every neuron nerve ending that is innervating the skeletal muscles or smooth muscles or whatever it may be, on every nerve ending there are sodium channels as well as calcium channels. So here I will be drawing couple of them. So this is your sodium channel, right? And at the same time, okay, this becomes your calcium channel. So the blue ones are the sodium channels and the black ones are the calcium channels. On every axonal nerve ending you find these channels. So let's come back. So as I told you the main key role who is playing in this neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. So first of all we need to know how acetylcholine is actually synthesized. Right? As you know you take different types of dietary compounds daily. Daily different types of food or vegetables whatever you take. So as a result of the digestion there are some molecules that are released into the bloodstream or the extracellular fluid. So one of that molecule is choline. So you can also say the source of choline is your food itself. So choline through the food it, it when it is absorbed when, when the food is absorbed it enters into the 
blood stream and through the blood stream it enters into the neuromuscular junction so now the collagen which is present in the extracellular space so let me write here extracellular space or extracellular fluid whatever it may be so collagen in the extracellular space with the help of collagen transporter it enters into the presynaptic nerve ending so this after entering after entering of the collagen when the collagen enters into the presynaptic nerve ending we need to combine the collagen with one more thing that is acetyl coa so from where this acetyl coa has come in the presynaptic nerve ending itself there are abundant amount of mitochondria right so this is one of your mitochondria so there are abundant amount of mitochondria so mitochondria through several chemical reactions and several cycles finally it produces an end product called as acetyl coenzyme a so mitochondria produces acetyl coenzyme a right now this collagen as well as acetyl coenzyme a both of them are transformed or are converted into combined and converted into acetyl coa both of them are converted into acetyl collagen not coa it's acetyl collagen right so once again collagen which is present in the extracellular fluid is transported inside the presynaptic membrane with the help of collagen transporter next acetyl coa is obtained from mitochondria through several chemical reactions finally the end product of mitochondria which is released is acetyl coenzyme a now this collagen as well as acetyl coenzyme a in the presence of an enzyme cat c a t c stands for collagen a stands for acetyl t stands for transferase collagen acetyl transferase so in the presence of this enzyme collagen acetyl transferase collagen and acetyl coa both of them are transferred or transformed into or converted into acetyl collagen so this is how acetyl collagen is formed now this acetyl collagen must enter into the vesicles because vesicles have to fuse here and release the content right so acetyl collagen now it has to enter into the vesicles so as you know here in the nerve ending there are different types of vesicles in abundant amount many vesicles are present and this vesicles contain these red molecules which i am drawing here these are the acetyl collagen molecules so actually how does this acetyl collagen enter into this vesicles so let me enlarge one vesicle and show you how does this acetyl collagen has got entered into this vesicle so this is one vesicle which i am enlarging it and the surface of the the membranal surface of this vesicle is called as vesicular membrane right when this is your presynaptic membrane uh, and this becomes your vesicular membrane on the presynaptic membrane what are the transporter proteins present and what are the uh, structures that are present on the presynaptic membrane are sodium channels calcium channels and collagen transporters and on the surface of the vesicular membrane what are the structures those are present are collagen acetyl collagen transporters here there are collagen transporters transporting collagen from extracellular fluid into presynaptic membrane so here there are acetyl collagen transporters or acetyl collagen antiport we call it as right so this gets transferred inside with the help of this acetyl collagen antiport or acetyl collagen transporter acetyl collagen which is present in the presynaptic membrane finally enters into the vesicle this is how the vesicle is containing acetyl collagen molecules this is how the vesicle has got this acetyl collagen molecules so why i am so fussy about this collagen transporter and as well as this antiport i mean acetyl collagen antiport because there are some drugs right there are some pharmacological drugs that bind this collagen transporter and there are some other pharmacological drugs that bind this acetyl collagen antiport right so the drugs that are binding this collagen transporter are mainly one drug right it is hemi collinium 
right? Hemicholinum is a drug that binds to this choline transporter and does not let the choline to enter inside. When choline does not enter inside, acetylcholine can't fuse with any other thing except other than choline, right? Other than choline, it cannot fuse to any other thing. It can fuse only with choline. So when choline is not there, finally acetylcholine formation is stopped or ceased. In the same way, as I told you, this is acetylcholine antiport, right? That drug that binds to this acetylcholine antiport and does not allow acetylcholine to enter into vesicle is. So that drug is vesimolol. Right? So there are mainly two pharmacological drugs which you need to remember here regarding the transporter proteins. Hemicholinium is, the hemicholinium is the pharmacological drug that mainly binds to the choline transporter and does not let choline to enter inside. At the same way, on the situated on the vesicular membrane, there is acetylcholine antiport. Binding to this acetylcholine antiport, there is vesimolol. So when vesimolol pharmacologically binds to this, it does not allow acetylcholine to enter inside. When acetylcholine cannot enter inside, the empty vesicle cannot fuse. Even though it fuses, it releases its empty substances. I mean, nil. There is no acetylcholine in that, right? Now, finally, we learned about the synthesis of acetylcholine and transport of acetylcholine into the vesicle. Now, we will learn about the fusion of acetylcholine. I mean, fusion of acetylcholine containing vesicle to the presynaptic membrane. So finally what has to happen is that this is the vesicular membrane, right? Blue color one surrounding the vesicle and this is the presynaptic membrane. So finally this vesicular membrane and presynaptic membrane both of them must fuse together and release acetylcholine into the neuromuscular junction or we also call this as synaptic cleft, right? Now how does this exactly happen? You need to know one thing that on the surface of the vesicular membrane there is a protein like this binding protein so this binding protein is called as syntex synaptobrevin right and there is one more protein located on the presynaptic membrane that is syntexin right so let me write it here this protein present on the vesicular membrane this is called as Synaptobrevin, right? And the protein that is located on the presynaptic membrane, it is syntexin. Syntexin, right? Now, as I told you, these are blue color ones are sodium channels and these are calcium channels. You know from electrophysiology that whenever a cell is electrically stimulated, automatically the sodium channels open and sodium enters inside. So when the nerve ending or the when the neuron, right? This is your neuron, right? This is your cell body, this is your axon and this is the nerve ending. So this part of the nerve ending, I have drawn it here, right? Now when you stimulate this neuronal nerve, I mean when you stimulate this cell body electrically, electrically when you stimulate this cell body, automatically, the electric current from the cell body passes down into the axon and from the axon it passes into the axon terminal these two are called as the axon terminals and finally enters into this nerve ending or the presynaptic nerve ending so now this electrical impulses is coming from the axon into the nerve ending so by the time when the electrical impulses reach immediately the sodium channels get sensitized or they get altered and immediately the sodium channels open and there is sodium influx right so this is how the sodium is coming in so once again when you irritate or when you electrically stimulate this cell body the electric currents from the cell body pass down to the axon and from there it passes to the axon terminal and finally enters into the presynaptic nerve ending see this is the electric current that is entering into the presynaptic nerve ending when the electric current enters into the presynaptic nerve ending the sodium channels get sensitized or altered or get irritated and immediately open its pores. When the pores are opened, as you know, extracellular fluid contains a rich amount of sodium. 
so sodium passively diffuses into the presynaptic nerve ending right and you know from electrophysiology one more thing that whenever after stimulating a cell when sodium enters inside the cell gets depolarized right so the same thing is happening here whenever the sodium from the extracellular fluid enters in the presynaptic membrane this entire presynaptic nerve ending gets depolarized the moment when this nerve ending gets depolarized immediately the calcium channels open that is the reason why we call this calcium channels as depolarization sensitive calcium channels because they are opening as a result from the sodium depolarization whenever the sodium enters it gets the entire nerve ending gets depolarized that depolarization current makes this calcium channels to open that is the reason why we call these calcium channels as depolarize depolarization sensitive calcium channels calcium channels don't open simply they open only when there is a depolarization here depolarization is brought up in the nerve ending by the sodium influx right now the calcium ions have opened i mean calcium channels have opened and there is influx of calcium as calcium channels are large so there will be more and more calcium influx right so the calcium is entered in and one important thing i forgot is that as i told this protein that is present on the presynaptic membrane is synthexin right synthexin so this is your synthexin right synthexin has two stick like structures like this so here there is one stick like structure and here the second one right there are two drums or stick like this sticks these two sticks whenever they are closed like this the synthexin i mean the active site of the synthexin molecule is closed when these two sticks open the active sites are open right now these sticks are closed so that the active site is not open and this synaptogramin cannot fuse with the synthexin now as a calcium channels a calcium channels got open and when calcium enters inside this calcium here one calcium ion binds and on the other stick the other calcium ion binds right so here there are two calcium ions one calcium ion on the right stick and next calcium ion on the left stick you know calcium sir ions are positive charge so here when there is one positive charge so let me explain this so this is one stick and this is the other stick right here there is one calcium here there is another calcium and both are kept near to each other when the positive charge positive charge come together immediately they get repelled right the moment when they get repelled the moment when these both sticks get repelled like this this vesicle containing the synaptobrevin comes and fuses with the synthexin right so i will show you the fusion here so when when they get fused they look like this let me show it here itself right so this is how the fusion takes place so sodium ions are important to enter here because when there is no influx of sodium then there is no depolarization when there is no depolarization there is no calcium ions open i mean the channels of calcium ions will not open unless there is depolarization in the presynaptic nerve ending so depolarized sense to calcium channels get open calcium enters inside you know calcium is positive charge it binds to two of these sticks initially these two sticks were closed so when calcium binds to the right and the left when they come near to each other i mean they are already near to each other so both of the calcium ions bind here and make when positive positive charge come here they get repelled and make the active site open so now the active site is free for synaptobrevin molecule so that synaptobrevin molecule easily comes and fuses with the 
syntax in now what happens there is further more fusion in this so as a result of this fusion it finally the vesicular membrane and the presynaptic membrane finally fuses together and finally there is a release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft right so this is how acetylcholine is synthesized and acetylcholine is transported into the vesicle and acetyl and the vesicle containing acetylcholine is fused and finally released so this is the important thing which you need to learn and next once acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft how does it act so this we consider as the post synaptic membrane when this becomes your pre synaptic membrane obviously this is your post synaptic membrane so on the surface of your on the surface of your post synaptic membrane you find ion channels right so here on the surface of your post synaptic membrane you find ion channels so these are the ion channels located on the surface of I am drawing here one, but there are quite many ion channels, some thousands and thousands of ion channels, right? So this ion channel is made up of five proteins. Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Beta, Gamma, Delta. So these all five proteins together, right? When you take this as your ion channel, so this is one protein, this is one, this is one, and in this way, In this way, all the five proteins, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, gamma, delta, all of them fuse together, circularly they fuse together to form this ion channel. For suppose, this is your alpha 1, this is your alpha 2, this is beta, gamma, delta. So all these five proteins, together they fuse, right, together they fuse and finally they form they, they form the circular ion channel like this. So when this ion channel gets opened, the ions enter inside. When this ion channel gets closed, I mean when the pore gets closed, so there is no influx or reflex of the ions, right? Now, this ion channel has a site. This is called as ligand binding site. Every receptor, when I when I'll explain the receptors, I'll be explaining what is ligand binding site, right? So on every receptor, receptor in the sense it needs to receive some ligand molecules, right? For suppose this is your ligand molecule and this is your receptor. So this portion of the receptor is called ligand binding site. Ligand binding site is the part that is present on the receptor to which the ligand comes and binds here. So this is your ligand binding site present on the ion channel. Now the ligand binds. What is the ligand here? It is acetylcholine. This ligand comes and binds here. The moment when ligand comes and binds here, it makes the ion channel to open its pore. Right? Now the pore is open. When the pore is open, you know extracellular fluid is rich in sodium. So obviously, lots and lots of sodium enters inside. You know when sodium enters inside what happens? There is depolarization. When the skeletal muscle got, has got depolarized, it means that there is contraction that is taking place in the skeletal muscle. Right? Now, so this is the entire concept of neuromuscular junction and there are mainly two diseases that are mainly acting on this neuromuscular junction. So we call those Diseases or disorders are neuromuscular junction disorders or neuromuscular junction impaired disorders, right? There are several many other disorders, but most quietly, I mean more commonly occurring disorders are those two types. One is myasthenia gravis and the other one is Eaton-Lambert syndrome. So very briefly, what happens in myasthenia gravis is that, you know, these are the ligand binding sites, right? So due to some, the, this myasthenia gravis is actually an autoimmune disorder. It means that our own antibodies are against ourself, itself, right? So our own antibodies harm our body tissues. How does they harm? So our own antibodies, they come and bind to this part like this. This is the ligand binding site. 
so when the ligand band inside is equipped or uh, binded with our own autoimmune antibody then there is no chance of ligand getting attached here when the ligand does not attach then the pore does not open when the pore does not open sodium cannot come in when the sodium cannot come in there is no depolarization and the muscle is said to be paralyzed so that what happens in myasthenia gravis and the other syndrome called as lambert eaton syndrome in that syndrome these calcium channels are blocked right these calcium channels are completely blocked when the calcium channels are blocked what happens calcium cannot enter in and cannot bind with these two sticks so that the active site will never be open and there will be no fusion of the vesicle with the protein i mean the sign up to syntaxin protein when there is no fusion then there is no release of acetylcholine so this is how the muscle transmission or the acetylcholine transmission is stopped right so this is the complete concept of neuromuscular junction and the important thing is you need to remember how the acetylcholine is synthesized and what are the drugs that are acting on the choline receptor sorry choline transporter and acetylcholine antiport and how does it exactly gets fused and you also need to know some clinical correlates regarding myasthenia gravis as well as lambert eaton syndrome so that's all for today right and in the further videos we'll be discussing regarding the receptors right thank you